Two very big games as the running begins in the National League South season. We face rival Slough and playoff contenders Dover, a club we've managed a couple of times on this channel before. And the gap at the top is currently eight points, but it's very quickly at risk of closing. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 39 of the head coach with me, Daniel. We are back today for two more big games in a promotion race. The running is certainly on the cards now and we are home to rival Slough before going away to Dover, who are up in fifth place. Eight points separate us from the top of the league and we're still having some troubles at home. But if you're looking forward to seeing if we can continue to edge closer, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Fingers crossed this will be a season that ends in promotion. And if so, will it be one that ends with a chance to step up in a job ladder too? We're going to find all that out as we go along this season. But let's firstly start on the transfer screen because we're coming towards the end of the free transfer window. And as a result, there's some interest in some of our players, mostly young ones, it has to be said. David McNulty was the cream of the crop in last year's youth intake. And he's getting interest from lots of clubs at this level. Weymouth, the latest ones to come in for him. He's training well. He's done okay for the youth team. I'm not surprised this team's looking but if we go to the transfer history there is one more addition to the club and that man is a centre midfielder we were rejected by two three or four a couple of them you saw in the last episode and the one we got in although it helps us today because it's a player from Slough is not someone who's going to really set the world alight it's emergency backup territory so Sam McClintock basically comes in to replace Archie Thomas who walked out Ollie Ewing is never getting replaced by this standard of player He's an okay midfielder, he's 26, he's two-star ability, has played 100 games at this level for Slough, so you've got to give him something, and he's featured nine times in the league this year, but not for us, and technically, he's a mile off. Six for passing, seven tackling. I don't really know what his biggest strength is. He is physical, he can run all day, he can work pretty hard, but he's not someone who's going to set the world alight, and barring an injury crisis... I'm not sure he'll start a game for us. Might get the odd sub appearance with a few bits of fatigue. But that's the addition that we've got to try and help us over the line. But let's have a look at the schedule. Because since you were last with me, four games and more drop points. Another home defeat, another frustrating draw. But crucially, a really big win last time out. We've started letting in goals galore for some reason. Only letting more than one once in the last month and a half prior. Now it's happened five games in a row. So you were with me for Weymouth as we snuck a very undeserved victory. We followed that up with a 4-2 win against Oxford City. That one much more deserved. They got a couple of late consolations after we got 3-0 up and Luther got himself a brace to make it comfortable after James Kroll did the same in the first half. Against Folkestone, it was a two-all draw. It was a very frustrating game. I think you can see why here. It was one-all at the break after James Kroll had equalised. We went ahead after a red card with Luther in the 83rd minute. And we drop points against 10 men. Is that going to come back to haunt us? Cal Roberts with a 92nd minute penalty. No idea what he's doing down at this level. Was a star for Notts County a couple of years ago. But now we're disappointed and we had to bounce back. And we didn't. At home to Haven and Waterlooville who have been up there most of the year. I thought we were on the right track when Yasin Torre equalised early in the second half. But then Brad Wade, the new goalkeeper, made his first big mistake in the 87th minute. It cost us a point. Away to Truro, we weren't much better and probably deserved to lose, if I'm being honest. A late goal from Boyd Beecroft saved the day. Kroll and Torre had equalised twice earlier in the first half. And if we have a look at the table to see why that might be important, Truro, bottom of the league by a distance. If we'd lost that game, it would have been a very tough one to take, as was the Folkestone draw with them in 17th. Slough, who we face first today, they're in 12th in mid-table, and they're not too far off the playoffs. They'll still think they've got an outside chance. And then Dover are right up in that mix. A club we managed in FM22's head coach, a club we managed in the FM18 head coach. They are a club that we have got a lot of history with. Well, we're hoping we can create some good stuff today. So let's go and get into the first of the two matches. Some really important fixtures in this run-in. After these two, we've got a little bit of a sort of neither here nor there run against sides in the middle of the table. But the finish is brutal. Hemel were up there last year. Of course, the side we managed for 20 years in FM22. Western Supermare in the playoffs. Chippenham, free scoring. They are the closest contenders at the moment. 
That could be a very big game if we don't get it wrapped up before the final day. But 11 games to go, let's start the run today, is a home game, and I don't really know what to do because we played that game back in what, the start of February, a one-all draw at home. I played a back five in that game. Then in the Oxford City game, they were sort of matching us up our normal tactics, so I played the back four and it worked. Against Haven, neither worked. I tried half a game with each. So let's go and see what tactics Slough are playing. And then we'll try and judge what we're going to do. So it looks like they're playing a 4-4-2. As a result, I'm going to go for our standard tactic. Lots of problems with fatigue because it is a Tuesday night. And only four days recovery as well. So a few changes needed. We'll go and get those done. We'll be back in a minute to run through the team. Well, here we go. A couple of adjustments made. I've rested one of the two centre-halves in the hope that then Grant and the other will be fit of the weekend. Got Caraccio, McClintock on the bench after what we just said about him, but only a few changes made. So let's see how we get on. It's Brad Wade in goal for the first game today. Anderson and Woodthorpe, the full-backs with Grant and Beecroft as centre-half. Wadden back in in central midfield alongside DeRose and Finney. Lloyd, Torre and Kroll. The aggressive front three. They're all in form. They're keeping us in it at the minute. But we've got to do better defensively. Two goals conceded in each of the last five games. If the same happens today, I don't think we'll win it. And here are the teams for our visitors today. Just looking to see who the stars are. Charlie Caton, a player we came up against with Airbus a few times back in the Welsh League. Sedwin Scott on the bench. I've noticed that a lot this year. A lot of good National League players dropping down very quickly. So let's see how we get on here. They've got firepower for sure. And of course, they're still hoping for a playoff place. A few of the lads inspired. It's the front three to save us. The defence is not doing much at all. We are going to need those three boys to deliver. Big home crowd. You would expect it for this one. They want us to finish above them in the league. Well, we've probably secured that now. But can we beat them on the day? That's the big question. We're just four minutes on the clock and we're back for a slough corner, which doesn't look good for us. How many stupid goals are we going to concede from these? It seems to be a big problem for us, despite using the exact same setup for set pieces home and away. We concede so many more at home. I had a look in the data hub. It was something like nine to three or something stupid, considering we've played a very similar number of games both home and away. Really is a bizarre little thing this season. Don't know if it's just the fact that we are switching off a little bit. We're maybe used to being on the front foot a bit more. But there's something that's a real problem for us at home. And next year, whether or not that tactical instruction or the, the little tactical experiment we went for last time sticks, I don't know. But we're going to have to do something. Because if we're still here, especially if we get promoted... We cannot play like this at home in the National League because we'll get absolutely mullered. Ball into the box. We've collapsed again. What is going on at home? We cannot put together two home results in a row. And now, I don't know what to do. I'm going to go attacking. I'm going to berate because it's an awful 10 minutes. It's stupid, poor goals to concede. And how can a side be almost invincible away from home and not be able to win a home game in any tactic? I thought after the Oxford City game, maybe we can go back to the back four at home. But it's not working, is it? Lloyd up to Kroll. Can we find a route back in it? Even Kroll's missing his chances now. And it does mean as well, of course, for the sixth game in a row, we've let him two goals or more. And it's absolutely scandalous. The defending's appalling. And I don't know how we can be so tight-knit on the road most of the time when this is happening at, at the reverse fixtures. It is astonishing. Anderson gets the ball to Lloyd on the right. I'm going to stop moaning because I'm going to get very frustrated. Through ball towards Kroll. The keeper's in no man's land. And he slides it in for 2-1. We've got a goal back. And we have been scoring goals for all of our faults in recent weeks. We have been scoring goals galore. And as long as we pick up some points... We're not going to bottle it because we'll match the rest of the league. I would take a draw from this game right now and we've got over an hour to get it back. It's just whether I trust us not to concede again. This is a long ball headed away to Reading. Flicked on for Caton, but Wadden wins it back. Crow with a great ball to Lloyd. Lloyd's in. 2-2. Two -two. There you go. You can give them a two goal head start because we're right back into it. Not even half an hour gone. We're going to stay attacking. Let's just try and put them under the pump. 2-2. Two -two, every shot on target's going in. And we're on the front foot again with Alfie Lloyd. Goff gets it on the edge of his box. They're not really convincing in their clearance. Woodforpe should get on the end of that. Knocks it down for Wadham and Finney. Great ball to Torre. The other two have scored. But he puts his one wide. 15 minutes to the break. To all it remains. It's a very even game. Could go either way. 
And to be honest, as we return just before the break, we should probably be happy to be back in it. If we can go into the break ahead, it would almost be a crime as DeRose. Since we got the first goal, we've been dominant. I just don't want half time to come now. Woodthorpe to Torre. Think the left back played him on. Cross is cleared anyway to Woodthorpe again. Finney back to Wadham. Good effort that. Not too far over the bar. It stays level. It's been a brilliant first half for the neutral. But there's not much defending going on, which I'm a little bit upset about. As Woodthorpe throws in, I don't think Beecroft's going to last long here. And if Finney picks it up in the centre circle to DeRose, he's been challenged by Marshall a bit too easily in the end. Somehow comes out with the ball though to Lloyd, through to Kroll, normally reliable. He's in again. He scores again. And if there is one thing we did not deserve at half time, and if there's one thing I didn't expect after 10 minutes, is to be saying, is Maidenhead United 3 Thou two at half time. Brilliant comeback. You've got to give the lads that. All of the front three looking a real threat. But defensively, we are an utter mess. Let's go and get back into the second half. I'm going to try five minutes staying attacking. If it doesn't work, we'll drop off. We're coming up to the hour mark. We've managed to keep this quiet so far as Kroll's got it from the byline by a throw-in. Back to Anderson again and his crosses towards Torre. Never getting close to that as Woodthorpe brings it away again. Up to Wadham. Through ball. Out towards the right-hand side. No one chases it. I think they were all worried they were offside there. But it does mean that the visitors can break away. As Goff goes long downfield. Flicked on on the halfway line. Beecroft running on empty. He's going to have to come off soon. I genuinely can't remember the last time Cocoracho featured in a league game. Probably at least four months ago. As Grant goes wide to Torre. Kroll's in the middle if he can find him. Gets it across the box. James Kroll puts it in. Is that another hat trick? I think it is. He has been absolutely phenomenal. It's a hat trick for James Kroll. It's 4-2. And somehow, after gifting the first 10 minutes away, giving them a two-goal lead, we are out on top. B. Croft replaced by Cocoraccio. We've got half an hour to go. Though we are back at the other end here as it's a cross coming in from the right hand side for Slough. Goes a bit too deep though and Odo gets it at the back post. He puts it in again. Lloyd clears it downfield. But it looks like we're under a bit of pressure here. I wonder if because we're two goals down they've gone aggressive. That was offside. Thank you very much. I'm just going to drop now. We're going to go standard. Or balance sorry. It's not a mentality I often use. But I just want to neutralise this game a little bit. I'm not sure we've got the capability to do that. As Grant at the back to Cocoraccio. Lovely clearance that, but it might work. Because Kroll's on the end of it against tired defenders. Beats three, gets himself in. It's saved by Shelby down to his left. It wasn't actually a good finish by his standards. But he's been so good. And he just carries it past people. As Caton's in, Grant gets the block. I'm going to take Woodthorpe off. At left back, he's knackered. Richard Bryan on for him. And then I'm looking at Finney and DeRose in the middle. Maybe McClintock gets his debut as Grant's up from a set piece. Marshall heads away. Brian picks it up again to Grant, trying to shoot, and he gets it in. How on earth did that get past Shelby at the near post? I did not expect Grant to be scoring. I was about to say he'll get a nosebleed. He's not normally up there. He's definitely not normally got the ball at his feet there. But he gets the shot away. Shelby with very weak wrists, and he puts it in for 5-2. It should be game over. I'm going to bring McClintock on. He'll get his debut in midfield. Replaces DeRose, who gets a rest for the weekend. And let's be fair, we've been really good since the first 10 minutes. Kroll's picked up a knock, which is a big problem. And you know what, actually? I'm going to take him off. I'm just going to make sure he gets a little bit of a breather. We'll see this highlight out first. We've got the instruction there. James Kroll will come off. The ball to the edge of the box to Sedwin Scott. Back to Sambu. Still can't believe some of these players they've got in the National League South. Over the top to Marshall. It'll be 5-3. There it is. Pending highlight changes always lead to a goal. And we get five minutes to see this out. We've actually got worse defensively, which is a big worry. But going forward, we've still got that brilliance. And a home win never, ever to be sniffed at this season. As Anderson goes back to Cucaraccio. Wide to the right for Alfie Lloyd. He holds it up for McClintock. It's a lovely pass, actually. Gets it up to Lloyd on the right. No centre forward in the middle, which might be an issue for him. But he picks out Torre. It's stunning. Alfie Lloyd, that is superb. Torre completes the set. All of the front three scoring. And if there is an injury to Kroll that's going to cost him the game at the weekend, we might well need him in form too. 6-3 Maidenhead. I've brought you back for a thriller. We'll be back in a moment for Dover away. Let's get cracking. I've just had a little brainwave while I'm here as well. I want to go and have a look at the schedule. See when Brad Wade made his debut. I think it was here. No, it was just after this game. 
A poor defensive run seems to coincide with Keeley coming out of the team. It's just occurred to me. So do I bring him back in even though he's not fit now? I'm probably not going to for this away game. But it's something I'm going to think about if we can get it wrapped up because I'm not convinced that Wade is better for the team than Keeley, even though he's a better goalkeeper. In terms of the day itself, we're going to make a few adjustments. Lloyd goes up front, Torre switches to the right, Luther goes in on the left-hand side and Kroll, he gets arrested entirely, will be replaced by Etaluku in the squad. We've also got to bring back Herbert as centre-half. He'll come back on the bench for Cocoracho, and then in the team he will replace Grant. Beecroft seems to be fit for now. And then the final change is going to see the return of Balducci. He will come on for DeRose, who got a rest in the week, just because Wadham seems to be fitter of the two. And then DeRose will be on the bench for McClintock. Let's get into the match. Balducci back in, Herbert back in, Luther in for the injured Kroll. Let's see what difference it makes. And here are the teams. Two changes for the hosts who haven't played since midweek as well. Jaden Fevrier, Charlie Adams, the skipper, big names in that team. Josh Dolin, Shauna Dark were on the bench. Normally a good goal scorer at National League level. Not sure what he's doing here in FM. George Langston at the back experience too. I mean, they've got a class side. Dover are up in the playoffs for a reason. It's because they're a good team. They've not got a massive crowd in though. They're playing 4-4-2. This might just suit us. We're going to start positive, see how we get on. If they put us under pressure, we'll go counter. We'll go cautious, as we often do on the road. Well, with the greatest respect to both teams, it's been an utterly awful half of football, which I will take. If you'd have offered me four points at the start of this episode, I would have been a very happy man. And if we can get a draw here, it would be a good result against one of those sides chasing. As Beecroft heads away on the halfway line, 33 minutes gone, there's only been one shot which was ours, but it wasn't shown on camera. As that one's put into the box, Wade deals with it well. And we've got a chance to play out here. Not sure that was key highlight territory, but hopefully this is. As we're on the front foot with Anderson. Up towards Lloyd. We've lost a little bit of that height up front, unfortunately. Kroll being out does mean that we've got a slightly smaller player. And we've got to find that ball over the defence, rather than just punting it up there. As Dolin on halfway holds up. Heavy touch. Gets away with it for Penny and Langston. Chance to come forward. You're going to see them create one or two chances here. Was that onside? Dolin's in. He scores, so I hope not. The assistant was running back at speed with his flag up. We get away with one. Still no shot for Dover statistically. And at half time, I'll be pretty happy with this. A nil-nil draw, not a thriller to watch, but I think I gave you enough goals in the last game, didn't I? We'll take this one. We'll get into the second half. I'll say I'm disappointed, but in truth, I'd be very happy with this outcome. Again, we've got to keep an eye on Beecroft as we're about 10 minutes into the second half now. Starting to struggle a little bit physically, but he is the best player on the pitch by far. And I'm looking at having a more Louisville behind us. 3-0 up. The gap is down to six points. And even though we're getting good results here, it will start to make me a bit tense. I'm looking at games coming up. The likes of Hendon at home where we should really be winning. And we're going to have to now because the gap is down to five. Josh Dolin has just scored. It was a lovely little dink. And Beecroft, it was his position. He ran out of steam. Yes, he's been winning headers galore, but he's offering nothing on the floor. Grant is on for him, and we're straight at the other end. Wood thought with a corner. Would love to score straight away. It's a poor corner. Langston heads away. Herbert on the edge of the box, though. Back to Wadham. Ball in is deflected away. There's a big chase downfield here. Dolin's going to get there, you know. What on earth is this defender running in? Is he stuck in custard or something? I think it was Herbert or Finney. But one of them is stuck somewhere, making him very slow. And Anderson chips forward. We're missing the six-foot striker here. He cannot win a thing. And I think we're going to have to make a little change of tactic here. Fevrier gets the ball to Campbell Hearn. Last year when we had Lloyd up front, those balls were going in behind. They were beating the defender. This time, not really happening at all. As Anderson, long ball forward again. I can't keep watching this. What on earth is going on there? Can we get it? So he's running into space. We're going to try and pass into space over the top. And see if that makes any difference. Langston's going forward. Might be 2-0 and over before we get to that. As Finney finds Wadham and Lloyd. This is better on the floor. Luther through to Lloyd. Might well equalise. He's in one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, he's taken it wise. But it doesn't matter. I was about to say he's lost his main chance. But on his left foot, rifles it into the roof of the net. Great play from Luther to stand in today. And Alfie Lloyd. Awful game. One chance, though, and one goal. That's the beauty of our centre forwards. We're going to make the changes after the goal. That was just the tactical one, I think. I'm looking at the fitness here as well now. Torre struggling. Finney struggling a bit as well. 
Let's see who we can bring on. DeRose will come on for Finney. That's not too much of a change. And then Etaluku will come on for Torre. They'll switch sides. We'll go two traditional wingers on support. And we'll just try and get forward and get the ball into the box. Because I don't think there's any great shame in us draw in this game. With a quarter to go, we must not lose it. Having said that, we're back with a Dover free kick in a pretty dangerous position. And we've seen enough of these type go in this year. As Campbell Hearn shot just wide of the post. Now the question is, with everyone on the pitch playing poorly, do I drop to cautious and just play for the point? Because it looks like Dover are starting to get on top and we're getting pegged back a little here. As Fevrier finds Pillin, he cuts inside. The choice might be taken away. It is. It's put in the corner by Tommy Pillin. I've waited too long to trust my instincts. And as a result, we're behind. We're going to have to go attacking. We're going to have to chase the game. But it looks like the gap's going to be five at the top. And that's probably the closest this has been in about three or four months now. And it's starting to get squeaky. The two-horse title race is on the way. We've not even had a shot on target in the last half an hour. What on earth do we do from here? We've got a corner kick. Nick me a point. Woodthorpe up towards Herbert. Loses out. DeRose to Wadham. On the volley. Cracking effort. But let's be honest. We don't deserve a point. Dover have been the better side. And as soon as we win a home game, we then lose our away form instead. Four points would have been a good outcome. Haven't and Waterlooville have scored again. With one minute of stoppage time to go, they're toying with us. They're time wasting. The referee's doing nothing about it, of course. But Anderson's got one last chance from the poor kick. Carries it forward. There's players in the box. Get up in support. It's a terrible ball. Blocked by the first man and cleared downfield. Herbert picks it up again, though, to DeRose. Balducci into Lloyd. He's offside. And he's straight through to Adams in goal. With 20 seconds left, I think that's going to be it. He will take a long time here. And the kick is long. It's over the top to Dolin. And we're not going to get it forward in time, are we? Woodthorpe finds Anderson to Balducci. Oh, now you start playing football. Where's the direct play now? Lloyd gets it up to DeRose. Oh, he's got to shoot. Oh, it's a good save. Keeper holds it. It's the final act of the game. And it was a chance. It wouldn't have been deserved. But it was a chance to nick a draw. A poor performance, a poor result, and an embarrassing performance. Well, the assistant said it, not me. The top of the table is more tense than I'd like it to be. We, of course, know that Haven and Waterloo Villa are a good side. And I guess we have to take into account we were missing our top goal scorer and star striker today. But five points the difference against a side who we played in the playoffs last year. We know this could yet go all the way. We know about that awful run in the last three or four games. So for now, we're just going to get through as much as possible. If we can win the title a couple of games in advance, of course, I'll come back for it. I would have loved to have shown the two sides I go and watch fairly frequently in real life in St. Albans and Hemel, quite local to me. But instead, I think it's going to be two of the last three. Hampton and Richmond struggling, but seem to be giant killers this year. Beaten us last time, beat Western Supermare 5-0. And in the other two games are Chippenham and Western Supermare, who I think, if I remember rightly, are still third and fourth. They are. So this could get sticky if we have a famous end of season FM collapse. Lots of defeats coming now. And of course, we're conceding goals. That's seven in a row we've let in two or more. I'm going to make the decision next weekend. I will bring back Josh Keeley. And I just hope that's going to solve our defensive problems. If you want to find out if it does and you are enjoying this season so far, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Go on, put your hands up, admit it in the comments. Who thought this title race was over a while ago? Because I thought we were probably going to run away with it. But it doesn't look the case now. Five points is the gap. It's a big thrilling end to the season. If you want to see how we get on, make sure you stay up to date. Subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring. You can find them down in the description below. A big link that helps support the channel and get you plenty of money off. And of course, up in the eye above, there's links to the Twitch channel, the other playlists, and much, much more. But above my head now is the latest season of our Build a Nation save. That one will be back tomorrow, and then I'll see you again here in a couple of days' time.